Hey everybody, what's up? It's Monday, December 2nd. We're already into December. Wow, the year just flew by. Alright, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. I did last week. Love that holiday. And now we have the Christmas and New Year's holidays coming up. And Hanukkah and all the holidays. All right, let's talk about the markets. We had a, what, a 268-point drop in the Dow today. No big deal. A pullback was definitely um, in the cards. Now, looking at reserve balance, remember all this stuff, let's break it down. The, the big picture situation, the big picture environment, the reality of the big picture is bullish. And that's because of the ongoing record amount of fiscal support. And that's not going to change. I told you that. I said that the main pillars of the fiscal equation, you're talking about Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. As a matter of fact, in today's report, let me mention that too. Today is Monday, therefore the new edition of the MMT Trader Report was sent out. And let me also just remind you, because this is very important, that on January 1st of 2020, the price goes up to $395 a month. And it's still cheap. Believe me, folks, I started it off at 75, it went to 100, it went to 125, it went to 145, it went to 195, it went to 250. Each rise I'm sure there were people that said, oh, it's, it's not worth it. But at $395, the $250 is going to look very, very cheap. And eventually it's going to go up to $1,200 a month. Remember, I'm the only one who has this service. This is Applied MMT. All right, but anyway, I digress. What I was talking about is the fiscal situation, and, and the reason why I segued into this is because I put a chart in the report today with the month-to-month -month increases in these uh, these so-called, you know, the, the, the Social Security, uh, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, what is termed in the GDP report, um, social payments to persons, government payments, government social payments to persons, okay? And you could see a very clear trend over the years how this is going up and up and up every single month. This is in a rising trend. And as I've explained in the past many times that the baby boomer generation, of which I am one, uh, reaching retirement age, they become eligible for Social Security, so the roles of recipients expand and expand and expand until a certain point when the entire baby boomer generation kind of passes through, you know, and then those payments start to go down. But we're still a long way away from that. Now, you could ignore this at your own risk and your own peril. I mean, I, I, I have to laugh. To be honest with you, because I see that it was just another one of these cockamamie uh, conferences, you know, with very serious people there. You had Ray Dalio of Bridgewater, you had Paul Tudor Jones, right? And these two guys were up on stage, you know, wringing their hands like it's the end of the world because of the deficit and the spending. Like, like, haven't these guys learned anything by now? I mean, the deficit. Seriously? These guys are like at the top of the hedge fund universe. And, and seriously, they're talking about this? I mean, this is, you know, I have people who are not even in finance who come to me. Man, I got people on my Facebook page who are just regular working people and they get it. And they came to this understanding or realization from the same, look, I was one of these people 20 years ago thinking, oh, you know, the government's overspending, we're going to go on hyperinflation, we're going to be the next Zimbabwe, we're going to be this and that, we're not going to be able to pay our bills, China's not going to let, all this. You got the top people in the hedge fund universe sitting there, seriously, 
talking about this ridiculous, oh, the deficit. And I guarantee you that these guys, Paul Tudor Jones, Dalio, they didn't make any money on the upside. As a matter of fact, Dalio is short the market now. You know, and he made a point to say, oh, no, it's not a big short. It's not, you know what? He was exposed, and he doesn't want people riding his coattails, and he's trying to downplay it. So anyway, we have the, the underlying, what I was talking about was that the underlying fiscal situation is very supportive. Now, within that framework, within that context, you have these, these normal cyclical flows of reserves in the banking system. Uh, and things are very, got a little bit, uh, not complicated, but complex in the sense that you know, the Fed came, oh, that's the other thing. They said, uh, Dalio and, and Tudor Jones said, Fed policy, Fed policy, they, they, and I've been a big critic of Jerome Powell, as you know. But back in September, reserves in the system came to a critical threshold. They were at that 10% threshold, which is what was necessary just to, as a matter of fact, they dipped below that 10% threshold when you look at uh, deposits in the system. So as long as that regulatory uh, constraint is there, where the banks have to hold 10% reserves against deposits, and the Fed had just brought the reserve balances down so low that they threw the system into default. And remember, reserves are not spread around equally. The main big banks hold the vast majority of the reserves. So you had these smaller banks, they were trying to borrow reserves overnight and that shot the Fed funds rate way over the policy rate and that's why the Fed had to come in so to critic and I've been a big critic of the Fed as you know but to criticize the Fed I mean maybe it's true to criticize the Fed for having brought down reserves below the critical level in the first place I mean that would be a valid criticism but to criticize the Fed because it responded by putting in reserves to um, you know to to anchor its its policy rate I mean you can't fault it for that it had to do that if it didn't do that then that would be that would be a reason among others to shut the damn fed down but it did it so I don't see like these guys again like how do you come on this is the top of the food chain in the hedge fund industry, and these guys are, are absolutely clueless. They're absolutely clueless. It's amazing. So anyway, we're in this cycle now. We've had a big rise in reserve balances. We're starting to see the effect in some aspects of the banking metrics, loans and leases, the growth pace slowing down, all right? But there's one thing I really want to mention here. I don't know if I have much time in this video. I'm just going to go into it briefly, and maybe I'll make another video tomorrow. Um, since the Fed's rate cuts, rate cuts, okay, which are universally believed to be stimulus, since the Fed's rate cuts this year, remember we had three rate cuts, personal interest income, all right, and this is all, you can see these numbers in the, in the, GDP reports in personal income. Personal interest income has declined by 30 billion. It has been reduced 29 billion in change this year so far because of these rate cuts. Now think about this. From the end of 2015 until the beginning of 2019, because of the rate increases, there was an additional 307 billion of personal interest income injected into the economy. That means a net, the, the non-government, the, the, you know, the, the economy received 307 billion more income because of those rate increases. Income increases. And since the Fed rate cuts this year, 30 billion of that, 10% of that, which was built up over the last four years, has been removed now. So to call that stimulus, hmm, that's a very funny kind of stimulus. 
Go to my website, pitbulleconomics.com, sign up for a 30 day, you got this month, sign up for a 30 day free trial of MMT Trader. Uh, January 1st, it's going up to $3.95 a month. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.